everybody. Welcome to our presentation. Today we will discuss the current trends in IT to embrace multiple methods and modes of IT delivery and what that means for today's modern PMOs. So what does bimodal IT mean to the modern PMO? Before we get started, we have a few quick logistics to go over with you. Uh, first of all, we will not open the line for questions. All the lines will be muted during the webinar. However, we will answer questions that are captured in the chat and question panel throughout the day's presentation in your GoToWebinar uh, control panel. So please feel free to ask questions during the course of the presentation. Also, if for some reason you get distracted or pulled away during the webinar, uh, no need to worry. We'll be distributing the recording of today's presentations as well as a copy of the slides to all the registrants following the webinar. Um, and with that, um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jim Patterson, uh, Director of Business Development for Tivity. And joining me today uh, in doing the demonstration portions of uh, the solution will be Matthew Willey. So with that, let's get started. So let's uh, talk about some of the challenges that we're going to talk about in this topic area. Uh, organizations today are increasingly confronted with the realities of digital transformation. Uh, traditional lines of business with more brick and mortar type of businesses with more traditional types of projects. Um, it's becoming faster paced, quicker turnarounds and more challenges as uh, more software comp uh, more companies are becoming software companies in reality whether or not they're more brick and mortar type of companies or more technology type of companies. And they're confronted with the rapid pace of change, uh, increased competition, and being able to stay on top of, uh, of that landscape in order to remain viable, competitive, and to be, uh, remain leaders in their own marketplaces. Uh, in that realm, IT leaders recognize that there is a need to be able to innovate more in this new environment, be able to manage uncertainty better, and to establish more agility to be able to respond uh, in a quicker fashion as markets change and as the speed of innovation uh, in general uh, accelerates. Now, part of the challenge here is that we must do all this while simultaneously running the business and hitting the business's performance goals and objectives, meaning uh, that additional agility and the changes towards the way of doing business and delivering may at some point uh, not be totally uh, in alignment with the way we've traditionally run our business from a financial uh, and other perspectives. Uh, another challenge is that we have a varying cultures and approaches and attitudes within the organizations. For example, folks that are developing software may be making inroads into being more agile, etc., uh, already in the different teams that are delivering um, so in, in this approach. But for example, middle and senior management may be more traditional uh, and waterfall in their type of approaches and the way they look at finances, at the way they manage and expect to get updates and status on where things are going. And being able to make those things work together is part of the challenge that we face today as we, as we go into this transition. All in all, what ends up uh, becoming apparent is that bimodal capabilities are becoming necessary and actually crucial for organizations. So with that, um, Let's talk about the concept of bimodal IT. Uh, in early uh, 19, I mean uh, 2015, Gartner introduced the term bimodal IT. And what they define that as is the practice of managing two separate coherent modes of IT delivery, one focused on stability and the other focused on agility. Now, what that means and, and how they define it as mode one and mode two uh, mode one more closely aligns with more the traditional PPM approaches, uh, more longer term marathon runner type analogy, uh, longer time cycles for the projects and the initiatives in that PPM environment, uh, using approaches like waterfall, V model, and other things that were more conducive to those types of approaches. And mode one by Gartner is defined as a more linear approach to change, emphasizing predictability, uh, accuracy, reliability, and stability. Uh, all good things, but maybe not necessarily um, uh, quick to adjust and quick to adapt to change. Mode two uh, describes more of the agile approach, and the analogy there is more of a sprinter, 
We have shorter time cycles and smaller deliverables using approaches such as Agile, Lean, Kanban, etc. The ideas of, uh, of, of ways to be more nimble within an organization. And the way Gartner defines Mode 2 is nonlinear, involving learning via iterations, emphasizing agility and speed, and above all, being able to manage uncertainty uh, much more effectively. So these are the two different types of approaches that are being deployed more and more within organizations. And Gartner projects that fully three quarters of organizations will be doing some um, semblance of both of these within organizations, but they may not be coexisting successfully uh, unless you do something uh, purposeful and focus on uh, making that happen. So what we typically have today is disconnected systems and teams. And we have challenges both from the traditional PPM approach, um, um, the perspective that's often taken by more senior leadership or the PMO. And then you have the agile folks who are the teams that are actually delivering software and technology products within an organization. So if you look at where some of the disconnects are from a PPM uh, a discipline perspective, is that agile in many cases is a black hole to the PMO. They really don't have any visibility into the business deliverables in process when teams use Agile. The teams go do their things, they're, uh, by the definition of Agile, self-directed, self-managing teams, self-organizing teams, uh, and oftentimes that doesn't provide the level of visibility that's desired uh, for comfort level. Um, and also there's a challenge that if that's the case with disconnected systems and Agile folks using their own tools that are conducive to that approach of uh, delivering. How can you manage a holistic portfolio for leadership? Meaning, if you're using disconnected tools and different tool sets across the organization, it becomes very difficult to get that holistic or uh, more comprehensive portfolio for visibility. And then there's the financial management aspects. How can you apply CapEx and OpEx to Agile projects? Um, um, if they're using different approaches, different systems, and they may not have the same controls in place that they do uh, to manage those aspects in, in, in project management. Now, from the Agile team's perspective, PPM may be perceived to not offer any value to the Agile teams, meaning is it overhead to slow them down, for example? Um, they may, uh, their challenges may be how can they deliver value with continuous builds and quickly with PPM, meaning is it overhead that um, um, impedes their ability to achieve the benefits of an Agile approach? Uh, and what, what, do, what do they have to do to or why do they have to track CapEx and OpEx? It's not something that's on their radar or part of their job responsibilities to understand and be able to fulfill on. And also, if you're using separate tools, there may be duplicate timesheet entry, meaning they're, uh, they're filling out time for the organization for time and attendance, maybe for their more waterfall or PPM type projects. And then they may be uh, providing time and status against their agile efforts in a different tool. The idea, the additional overhead of doing those things may be perceived as taking time away for, them, for them, their ability to uh, innovate and develop and being heads down on, on, on providing product. The key is you have to find the right balance. And that's the, the, the challenges today in the modern PMO. For example, in the PPM approach, which provides good government governance, meaning visibility, insight, alignment, and control, meaning uh, good vetting, good selection process, and then being able to manage and monitor those things through the life of the investment. And then the agility, the ability for an organization, its lifeblood, ability to innovate, uh, to have quick time to market, to meet the competition, and also be responsive to change as things change quickly, both in uh, market dynamic landscape, requirements, et cetera, uh, for the different products and projects that uh, are, are to be worked on. So really what the focus is these days for a modern PMO is trying to find or modify what's been traditionally the approach in PPM for governance to find a more appropriate governance and planning mechanism for the organization um, and also provide capabilities and promote a culture to experiment more and take on some of the agile precepts of go in there, do, fail fast, fail small, and fail visibly so that we can adjust and move on. And also, uh, if you're going to take your lumps, take your lumps at a time when you haven't made a big investment to find out way down at the end that maybe you've made, uh, uh, made some mistakes. 
Also combined with more predictable, mission, criti a mission critical, steady state, meaning if you can provide the agility on the development level, but with the uh, steady control and uh, steady state that a more PPM governance approach can take, if you can align those things and make them work together in harmony, the, uh, the organization can um, get the best of both worlds. So in a unified PPM and Agile solution, you're really looking at the different tiers here of what needs to be managed. From the portfolio perspective at the top, you could have one or more portfolios in your organization at which um, investment options and project uh, options are being um, uh, evaluated, looking at how well they align with the goals and objectives of the organization. Look at um, what type of return to the organization or competitive advantage they may give you. And then maybe organize those portfolios into different programs or products, maybe product lines, maybe different business units, et cetera. But within each of those, you have teams that are working on projects. And depending on how things get vetted or evaluated during the portfolio process, uh, a decision is made often as to whether a project is more conducive to being managed in more of a traditional waterfall type approach things like maybe construction or facilities or infrastructure type of projects versus things that might be more conducive to an agile approach, whether it be software development, new product development, et cetera. And the idea is not to have these things have to, by necessity, uh, live in different uh, tool sets, different environments, um, and different information structures, but to really have them in a hybrid solution that actually meets the needs of all the constituencies. So, uh, from Microsoft, um, Tivity has really uh, uh, made some inroads with Microsoft in producing a, an integrated Microsoft Agile slash PPM solution. If you look at uh, a solution that provides an end-to-end -end set of capabilities from intake and demand management of all the possibilities of ideas and investment possibilities, all the way through portfolio analytics and selection, resource management, financial management, time reporting, and all the reporting and business intelligence across that. Um, there is now a way in this uh, solution mix to provide a unified solution that also that leverages Microsoft Project and Project Online or Project Server to do the traditional waterfall projects as part of this mix, as well as leveraging the capabilities of Visual Studio for more of the agile development projects. So if you think about the Microsoft Agile PPM solution, it's really designed to enable a holistic 360 degree view of investment progress. Uh, it, by providing that visibility in that black hole we talked about earlier on, having that be mitigated or go away, it helps build trust and transparency of the activities and the progress and the things that are going on uh, to support the investments in more agile projects. It lets the teams work in their tool of choice though providing the upfront governance and authorization that makes an organization feel more comfortable with what's going on, and providing the financial and capacity planning information that allows um, management and prioritization and uh, accepting work at a rate which is um, sustainable and doable by an organization. From a portfolio management perspective, this combined solution allows a common intake from project requests and ideas that come in so that they can be initially vetted as far as their veracity and whether or not they should be seriously considered. And data can be captured around to support those, kind of an early business case type of information. But when those things are determined to be viable candidates, you can then determine through prioritization and alignment which projects should be worked on given a certain level of spend or capacity within an organization. And being able to align those things with financial and resource capacity planning so that those things are in alignment within our ability to deliver. From a project delivery perspective, some of these projects may be waterfall in nature and you may use a traditional waterfall planning process like you would in Microsoft Project. And those things can be done either in a fat client of Microsoft Project or in a web-based online planner within Project Online or Project Server. And all the things around that, not just the schedule tasks, but things like issues, risks, change requests, and deliverables can all be managed in a traditional waterfall um, uh, manner like uh, folks are used to doing in these types of PPM tool sets. But then along with that, 
we can do enterprise scaled agile, even though a project or an initiative may be vetted, uh, prioritized, and approved during a traditional PPM intake and governance process, it could be determined that this project be worked on in an agile fashion. And then from that perspective, the teams that will work on those projects can choose to, for example, use tools that are more conducive to agile. In this presentation, we're going to use um, uh, the Microsoft uh, options as, uh, as an example. But to be able to do all of the traditional backlog management in agile, uh, iteration and split sprint planning, be able to visualize and work with the data in Kanban boards, etc. Those things are all available through this combined solution that we're talking about today. And then all the team collaboration, whether we're in agile projects or more waterfall projects, all the things as far as uh, social feeds, conversations, document management, project artifacts, those are all part of the combined solution mix regardless of what kind of project that we're working on in this bimodal world. And then resource management. One of the keys of having a combined solution is that the resource workloads and the work that's being assigned to folks is no longer going to be in uh, uh, siloed different databases or solutions. Meaning, if this solution brings this information together into a common solution for managing this work and getting visibility into it, we can start looking at combined workloads of both our more traditional waterfall type of projects and our um, um, more agile projects and help us make decisions on what capacities we really have to take on new work as things change. And then time management. We alluded to this a little bit earlier on. Being able to have a single timesheet entry or single repository of all time data. Not only can you have the work elements from both your agile and your waterfall projects working together within a single timesheet so that you have one place to report time, you could actually be in your Agile tool as the uh, picture for VSTS, which is Visual Studio Team Services work logs, as you're doing your Agile projects. You could actually fill in the time requirements there and the combined solution will pass that information to the timesheet so you do not have to enter it in two different places. All um, uh, enhancements to efficiency and um, uh, and eliminating time waste. And then by bringing all of this data together in a combined solution in a common repository, the concept of project intelligence, the uh, visualizations, the business intelligence and reporting become centralized and more automated and become a natural output of the process. You can have uh, reporting and dashboards that are focused on just waterfall or just agile, or you can have hybrids that have the metrics that you're looking for for both and even can do some translation of traditional methods, uh, metrics in uh, Agile to provide management more traditional measures like red, yellow, greens, percent completes, and, uh, and finish dates, the things that they're used to seeing, can be gleaned from the data in the Agile in common dashboards to provide a comfort level if the perceptions and the attitudes are different in different parts of the organization. And full personalization of this is something that's available. The key is that the solution that we're talking about today supports modern project management methodologies. Uh, from Gartner's bimodal IT, which we talked about the definitions of earlier on, that's fully supported in this combined solution. And then from uh, a safe or scaled agile framework approach uh, for agile organizations, fully supported to provide consistent approach and application of these things so that you can provide um, uh, visibility and effective management of Agile across an organization, and not just on an individual team-by-team -team basis, but to provide some coordinated approaches and more effectiveness and uh, economies of scale across it all, fully supported by the bimodal uh, solution that we're talking about today. So what type of outcomes can we expect from a combined solution? We can bring improved portfolio alignment to the organizational goals through still maintaining uh, good portfolio management and governance processes. We can also have um, robust integration of all work and resources into a single view, regardless of what the method is used to execute on that project. And then Tivity's Project Connect that really brings this all together, really brings together business systems that make sure that there's no outliers, that there's no disconnected systems and processes that are part of some separate silo that isn't part of the mix to help decision making and execution. 
Also, a holistic view of resource availability, availability and efficiency across all work is a great dividend that you get out of a combined solution. Also allows for better forecasting and more realistic expectation, meaning the work we take on can be more in alignment with our ability to deliver based upon uh, dollars uh, and on resource capacity and skill sets that we have within an organization. Overall, by combining these things, we'll add improved governance uh, to the agile piece of this. It may be already in place in your organization for the waterfall projects in a, um, a PPM solution, but combining it for all projects regarding of what their genesis or their execution method is, the planning, execution, and reporting across that becomes better. And then by having the users that can work in the tools that are most appropriate for them and that they choose to use, that uh, uh, really ends up in uh, more satisfaction on the user base. So we think of this as better together. In this example, we're going to use Project Online and Visual Studio Team Services to bring you the feedback loops you need to remove the disconnect, meaning that they will work in concert and iteratively there'll be a constant bi-directional exchange of information between these two solutions into one common solution. So how does the Agile PPM solution work? Well, essentially, we're using an example today with all Microsoft technology. We actually have the innovation hub, which allows you to capture ideas and requests uh, using a, the SharePoint component of that, whether it be online or whether it be on-prem. The idea here is that you can collect these ideas, these epics, these ideas for waterfall projects, et cetera, and have them pass into project online as candidates for projects or initiatives within the PPM structure. At that point, if it's a waterfall project, it can be vetted, done a business case, and be strictly managed through Project Online from end to end right within that solution. But if it is determined that it's more of an agile type of project, it can be gone through and actually have uh, product backlogs uh, and um, uh, other aspects of that that need to be developed, done initially uh, from within Project Online, but through Tivity's Project Connect, you can then pass those projects over and have projects created over in Visual Studio Team Service so that the execution of those can be managed. Once that is done, the bi-directional exchange of information from Project Online to, to and from Visual Studio Team Service becomes an uh, automatic process uh, or an on-demand process if you want to exchange data at some point uh, manually. But the idea is that it seamlessly exchanges that so there's no keeping of two sets of books or having to report to two separate places to make those things happen. And then all the reporting analytics and metrics down using Power BI, SQL Server reporting services, the TFS onboard reporting services, and uh, all the Office 365 collabor collabor collaboration and productivity tools that are in there are all available to us to leverage that data. So that's in general how it works. So project initiation happens in Project Online, passing potentially over to Visual Studio, but then all project status and project work information comes back from Visual Studio. Project initiation, establish a connection with Tivity Connect, and once it's flagged as a uh, VSTS project, it then has that connection made and automatically does it. Very simple to set up. And the idea there is that uh, you can actually launch that from within Project Online and get into Visual Studio Team Services to do the work that you need to do. And that's where the Agile planning, launch it from within Project Online, but then have it uh, directly connected to the project within Visual Studio to be able to do all the detailed execution work for planning out your epics, features, stories, tasks, bugs, etc and also planning your iterations and sprints. Then you can sync the Agile plans and publish them back to project, either on a scheduled basis or on an on-demand basis. And then that information reflects and can be visualized back in the PPM system or project online, meaning there's no more black hole. And then from a tracking perspective, uh, Agile tracking, you can actually 
um, uh, update hours, whether it be efforts expended or remaining work, and have that information feed directly back to the timesheet that's managed in the PPM solution, meaning no duplicate entry. All right, so with that, let's uh, go to what the PPM solution looks like. And with that, uh, Matthew will take over and demonstrate it live in the system. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jim. So, <coughs> excuse me. I'm logged into Project Online here, and you can see it's all part of Office 365. I have all of my other Office 365 apps here, um, as well as you can have Project Online by itself, separate from Office 365, if you choose to do so, and you haven't moved into Office 365 yet. And right now, where I'm at is I'm on the Project Request page. So this is the one place where people can come to submit all the different requests they have, um, whether those are requests for Agile projects or for waterfall projects, um, different ideas they might have, whatever it might be, everything can funnel into this list. Down here I see all of these different ideas and, and project requests and such. I can see what type of projects they're asking for. Are they mobile projects, cloud computing projects, whatever it might be, right? And some other brief information around, you know, estimated benefits, costs, risk, priority, you know, things of that nature. And so the idea is, if you have this one place to collect all these different requests, um, then we can start to look through them, we can rate them, uh, we can get prioritization scores based on some of this information and do some light prioritization here and figure out, okay, we got 100 requests, obviously we can't do 100 of them, but, you know, these 20 or these 30 or whatever it might be look interesting to us. Let's spend a little bit more time on those 20 or 30 doing some more planning and some more analysis and then see if those are things that we should be investing in that are going to give us some good return. So I think of it like a funnel. This is the first part of the funnel here where we take a lot of ideas and requests and such in, and we funnel it down to a smaller group. And the way we do that is simply by coming in here and clicking on this and go, yep, this one looks good. I'm going to create a project from this. But what it does is it creates a proposed project that we can now do some more portfolio analysis on. So at that point, once it's a proposed project, we put in some other information um, like a budget, and we'd put in a high-level resource plan or project schedule and possibly some strategic alignment information. And from that, then we can do this type of portfolio analysis that we're looking at here. What I'm looking at is the cost analyzer. And so out of those 20 or so different projects that we'd selected, you know, from that list of all the different ideas and requests and such, we can say, well, we only have $4 million, right? Um, if we were to spend that $4 million on these projects, which projects should we do? Um, first, anyway, that type of a thing. And you can see that based off of the priority or the value that these projects are going to give us, comparatively to the cost, it figures out these projects are going to give us the most value. This is my most efficient portfolio. It's going to give me 66% of the value of all of these projects if I were to do them all. Now, you can also force projects in and force projects out. So if it's a government compliance project, I have to do it. I can force that in. If it's something that we absolutely know we don't want to do for whatever reason after looking into, you know, the details behind it, we figure out, hey, that's just something we can't take on right now for whatever reason. We don't have the skill set or whatever it might be. Great. You can force things out as well. But then you can say, um, you know, back to management, well, why can't you do all the projects? Well, um, I'm going to need more money. What if I have $5 million? So you can do what-if scenarios. If we have $5 million, we can do a lot more projects. You'll notice now we're up to about 87%. So maybe we want to, you know, we're okay with that. We're willing to invest a little bit more to get that extra value and do those extra projects. So really this just helps give visibility um, and some clear, um, you know, objective information into your, all of your different requests that are coming in, both Agile or Waterfall or just, or not, right, whatever it might be. No matter how you're going to execute on these projects, we're bringing that governance in that, that Jim was talking about, right? And being able to select the right work instead of just kind of doing whatever we think today, that kind of a thing. <clears throat> From here, then you can also analyze resources. So now that we've figured out, okay, we're willing to spend the $5 million to do all those projects, great. Um, but do we even have the resources to do those projects? So what I can see here now is it automatically took out all the projects I didn't have budget for. It's saying we're not doing those. Don't include that in our resource analysis here. <clears throat> but then it's saying based off of when these projects are set to start and finish, um, you don't actually have the resources to do all those projects, right? I can only do the first set here. 
Um, and it's saying, more importantly, I should do the first set here. That's where I should put my resources to get more value. But then you can do things like move, um, move your different projects around, right? I can update the start date of these and move these around. Notice they're all very staggered. If I spread them out a little bit more and update some of the starts and finishes, then we can probably make more of these projects slip in here um, so that we can do those as well. The other thing we can do is we can hire more resources. So we can say, well, what if we hire eight resources and then recalculate? That 62% of project value that we can get is going to go up because we're going to be able to push some more projects in. Now we can get 80% in, that type of a thing. So this whole process here allows me to start out with a large amount of requests, filter it down, and do some more detailed analysis as we've done here. And now we know, okay, if we hire eight resources, and it even tells you what types of resources to hire if you go into some of the different requirement details and reports and stuff, um, then we can do this set of projects. Now let's start planning those and executing on those projects. Um, so I'm going to switch over here to my project view now where I can see, okay, I've approved all these projects. We're ready to start you know, planning them out in more detail, the schedules and such. Some of these projects might be enterprise projects or otherwise known as waterfall projects. And some of these projects are agile projects. But depending on, you know, and, and that's going to depend on what the type of project is, right? Does it lend itself better to Agile or does it lend itself better to Waterfall? You know, if it's a software development project, maybe it's better to go towards the Agile perspective, right? So then from here, um, I can pick and choose what tool I want to use. For example, for this Fabricam project, I could open this up in the Microsoft project in the browser. In Project Online, there's an online waterfall planning tool that you can use. I could also open it up in Microsoft Project Desktop, and I could build my and publish it back in. Um, but if it's an Agile type of project, it lends itself well to that. Then what I'm going to do is hit Open in VSTS. <coughs> when I do that, <coughs> um, it's going to actually open this project up over in VSTS. Um, so that we can come and we can build out our plan here. So I'm going to build out all my different epics, let's say, and then under those epics, I'm going to build different features. And under those features, I'm putting my user stories, and under that is all my development tasks and bugs and things of that nature that I might need to work on. So I can build out this plan over here. Then I just, you know, all the things that I want to do. Then I'm going to drag and drop those into different iterations. And I can come into my board view as well. And I can update then status as we actually start to work on this, right? We've done our planning. We've assigned our tasks. We're starting to work on this. Now I'm just dragging and dropping items to active, to resolve, to close, you know, whatever status you might be moving these items into. And as we're doing that, all of that status is flowing on back in the project online. And we'll take a look at that in just a sec. Um, also, though, I might want to be tracking time on these items. So we can get an idea of how much time are we spending to build out certain features or user stories or down to the detailed table if you want. So I can flip to my time view here and I can come in and I can add time onto this and say I worked four hours on this item um, and that information will push back into Project Online as well so that you can kind of roll up time across all of your projects and get actual hours so we can say you know, the budget hours versus the actual hours. And, and we can also get resource management information out of that right to be able to see are we utilizing our resources properly and, and all types of good things that we'll take a look at. So from there, again, all that information is pushing back into Project Online. <clears throat> and now what I can do is I can click into my project here in Project Online. <clears throat> And if I want to get a view of all of that work that's going on and status of it, then I can come in Project Online. And right now I'm looking at this in the online planner, Microsoft Project's online waterfall planner. And I can see a view of this information. This particular view groups by epic, then feature, then story, and then all the detailed tasks below it, that type of a thing. And we can see that information coming back again. If you planned it into an iteration, here's your start and finish dates. Um, if you've estimated work on that particular item, then that estimated work will come back in here. As you put actual work, that flows back in, um, so on and so forth, percent completes, et cetera. And our integration is very smart in the sense that not all of this information is in plain sight over in VC VSTS. Sometimes we have to do some different calculations and things to kind of map it to the right place and, and bring that information back in. So it's really a, a solution that we built based off customer feedback and requirements um, that allows you to kind of convert that Agile data into some sort of apples-to-apples apples type data so that we can look at it together in views like this, right? 
Also, let's say I wanted to see this by iteration, you know, what's going on in the current iteration, that type of a thing. I can just change my view here. Now here's iteration one. Here are all of my planned items and the status of those items and work, etc. Iteration two hasn't quite yet been planned. We've started to put things in there. As that's planned, more and more will pop in there. And when we get to three, that'll come in and so on and so forth. So you can hopefully see how that information really flows back into Project Online. And then what that's going to allow you to do, really the value of all of this, um, is different reports and such of that nature. For example, uh, this report here, this is a, a view within Project Online that allows you to look at a specific set of resources. Right now I'm looking at, say, business analysts. And I can see here all of my business analysts. Here are the projects they're working on, whether they're agile or waterfall projects. Doesn't make a difference, right? I'm pulling all that information in. And I can see that some people, like Amy, is over-allocated within the next few months here. And then other people um, don't have any work at all to work on, so we need to get on some projects. That, they're kind of hanging around, not doing a lot. <laughs> but you can start to get these views of what people are working on. And if you want more details into that, um, you can flip into an assignments view, and not only can I see which projects they're working on, but I can get a lot more detailed information about Amy is working on this project, and here are the tasks or user stories, backlog items, whatever it might be if they're Agile type projects. Rolling the Agile work and the project work all together so I can see exactly what Amy is working on, how many hours she's spending, completes, et cetera, et cetera, and get some real good visibility into that. Then, if I hop into Power BI real quick here, <clears throat> in Power BI we can build really nice rich dashboards and we have a set of rich dashboards and reports out of the box that you can utilize to get other visibility into this information. Um, this particular one I'm looking at right now is what we call the hybrid portfolio dashboard. Um, and I can see as a whole my portfolio I have some cost goals, meaning we, we're not supposed to spend more than a certain amount of money. <clears throat> and right now we're a little bit under that, so we're looking pretty good. Again, across both Agile and Waterfall projects. From a risk perspective, we're a little bit under on risk, so we're doing good there. From an ROI perspective, um, we're a little bit over. And I just said that we're actually spending a little too much over here. Um, on, from ROI perspective, though, we're, we're getting extra return for that extra cost, at least. So maybe we're OK with that. You know, We can start to drill in and look into this information. But right next to. Um, these more traditional PPM types of charts, like bubble charts comparing ROI versus risk or ROI versus cost or whatever it might be, we can see things like sprint turn downs and bug trends if we just want to focus in on the Agile information all within one dashboard, right? Burn downs and things of that nature. But then each one of these visualizations you can click on and you can really drill into these reports then if you want to get more information and see what's going on. I want to see all of my different projects grouped by portfolio is what we're looking at here. And I want to see how those projects are doing. I see overall status, schedule status, work status, resource costs, issues. You know, three of my projects are at risk. 22 of them are over budget. You know, these types of metrics and such. And then I can come in and I can filter and I can say, okay, I just want to look at projects that are, are having problems. Basically, all my ones where overall health is either red or yellow. Focus in on those projects, see what's going on there. And then I can even drill into then the different information like schedule. I can drill into my cost summaries for these projects. And again, right, these aren't just waterfall projects I'm looking at. It's rolling together the information from both Agile and waterfall projects all together for me into one place. I can, you know, keep tracks of things like risks and issues with these projects and really drill into whatever level of detail that I want. So hopefully from that you can see how we can take all this information um, within Project Online and all that information within VSTS and you can manage the project in either tool, whichever one makes more sense and what's going to give you more value from an execution perspective. But we tie that back to the governance and selection and then we create these different reports and dashboards that give you visibility into all of it together so you don't have to look in two different places or try to create these manual reports. And hopefully you can get a, a lot of value out of that solution, get a better idea of what's going on with your full portfolio, not just one or the other individually in silos. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Jim. He just has a few more slides on how Project Connect works and some closing contact information type slides, and then we'll let you go very shortly. Thank so, you, Matthew. No problem. Okay.
Hopefully my, my screen is showing. Let me go into presentation mode. So a little bit about uh, what's supported. Uh, this solution that we discussed and demonstrated to you today is supported in both Project Server and Project Online. Project Server 2013 and Project Server 2016 for your on-premise folks and also Project Online, which is always an up-to-date version of that solution. From the Visual Studio perspective, we support uh, TFS 2013 and 2015 for the on-premise folks and Visual Studio Team Services Online for those folks in the cloud. So if you're on these solutions, what you saw today uh, can be executed in the way that you saw. Now, how does this work? Well, we actually uh, maintain Project Connect up in the cloud, up in Azure. And we have our different connectors for different solutions. Now, we did focus on the TFS uh, solution for Agile. This model will work, and we do have models that support uh, other Agile tools. So if you already have adopted and have embraced other Agile solutions like JIRA, uh, version 1, etc., uh, we can uh, help do this bimodal in that regard. Um, it can be done either with solutions that are up in the cloud, up in Azure or other hosted clouds, or private clouds or on-premise that you have. So the idea is that we're leveraging Azure Service Fabric from a scalability perspective to auto-scale and provision as needed, and all of the services that are up there provided by Microsoft to make that work. And this is a productized set of connectors, meaning that these are not one-off connectors as people typically do for integrations at, uh, at individual customer sites, meaning that you do not have to maintain them, um, update them as APIs and solutions change, and make sure that they are in working order. Uh, Tivity as a vendor um, provides that as a service and uh, maintains all the updates and upgrades so that you maintain in business and do not have to incur the cost of ownership to make that work ongoing. Just so you know about Tivity, we're a full service provider for enterprise project and business productivity solutions using Microsoft technology, really emphasizing cloud technology these days, but we also support on-premise folks. We provide all the professional services, education and training, ongoing customer success and support, and help people with business process and optimization. Um, we have cool different approaches for getting people up quickly on a low-risk basis, whether they be through kickstart programs with pre-configured solutions that get it up quickly, um, and also education and training, whether they be traditional on-premise classes or we have a learning management system that allows you to uh, get the education you need and for the topic areas you need as you go and as you add more people. But we have uh, many years of consulting um, and experience with the Microsoft Project and Portfolio Management and Work Management stack. So in, uh, just so you know, you can contact us at infoactivity.com if you have other questions or if you'd like us to schedule a live one-on-one -on -one demo to see specifically how the bimodal approach with this solution can work for you specifically in your use case. Uh, also, we offer our folks uh, free Agile PPM and assessment and roadmap. That means we'll do some initial discovery and get an idea of what it would take to get you where you want to go so that you can qualify and vet whether this is possible for you. And if you want to do a trial of Project Online and Visual Studio Team Services, we can set you up with a free one and also provide you uh, hand-holding and support so that you have a successful experience going through and evaluating those tool sets and seeing if they'll fit for your organization. Uh, if you really liked what you saw here today, we have a whole slew of on-demand webinars on our website. Go to Tivity.com and then go into Insights and Webinars and you'll see a bunch of former uh, webinar topics that are out there like Unified Microsoft Agile and PPM Solution and Agile and Traditional Project Management, Homogenous or Hybrid are just two of them that are out there. And that site will also give you insights into what upcoming live webinars are happening as well. Um, so if you'd like to contact with either of us directly, I'm Jim Patterson. Uh, and Matthew Willey did your demonstration, so feel free to reach out to us if you have specific questions regarding this. With that, I'd like to thank you all for participating today. Once again, we will be sending out a recorded version of this webinar to you all and a link to that, as well as a copy of the slides that you saw today. And if Tivity or Microsoft can help you in any way, 
uh, as you move towards a more bimodal IT operation, do not hesitate to reach out. We're happy to help. Thank you and have a great day.